Okay, so uh, my bank account might be crying a little bit now, but we know it's worth it. Hello everyone and welcome to my first video of 2023. So I thought the best way to bring in the new year would be with a book haul. So as you can see from the intro, this is quite a large stack. Um, I did not realise how big these stacks were until I just put them together five minutes ago. Um, so we'll just get into it. But before we begin, I hope you guys had a wonderful Christmas and New Year. And hopefully 2023 is going to be awesome for reading. So let's get into the haul. Okay, so we're going to start with this stack here because this is mostly all the paperbacks I've got. So I want to start with this little stack up top because this is a series. So, the first one we are going to talk about is the Veronica Speedwell series by Deanna Rayborn. I was introduced to this series by Katie Colson last year and absolutely fell in love with the first two books. And I decided why not haul them. So, we have books 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I am still waiting for book 7 to come out in the paperback here in Australia. Because I know book 8 is coming out in March, which is also my birthday month. Katie's described this as Miss Fisher meets Sherlock so I like I said I read the first two last year and absolutely fell in love with them so I just had to haul them. Okay so the next two I'm going to haul are series continuations. So the first one being The Mask Falling by Samantha Shannon. So this is the re most recent paperback of book four so as you can well you probably can't see very well in this but this is now going to match all the other covers that have the same well they're not the same spine as I call it but these are the newest paperbacks and they all match whereas recently some of the books of the bone season I had are pretty large print well they're not technically large print they're just bigger books I don't know what the phrases but this is of course book four and I am so excited to be participating in the bone season read along starting next month that is hosted by Danielle Page and oh my god I'm so terrible with names this is this is why you don't film videos this late at night but I had to get it done because I've been so busy during the day but I will be rereading this as part of their read along in starting throughout the year and this of course will be starting in February but I'll leave the link to that video down below so if you guys are interested in this read really long check it out and then the second series continuation is Defend the Dawn by Bridget Cameron so this is the sequel to Defy the Night which was one of my favorite books of 2021 so in this one it's basically we follow a girl who it's essentially a smuggler of this magical plant that cures ailments, but it, the plant is very controlled by the king and his brother. So, yeah, I it's been a while since I've read The Fire Night, but I really, really loved it. I've heard very mostly great things about this. A couple of reviews I've sort of seen as well, uh, but I'm happy to give it a chance. I absolutely loved the first one, rated it five stars. So hopefully that is the case for Defender Door. Okay, so the next three books I want to talk about are some crime books. So the first one I'm going to add is Desperation and Death by J.D. Robb. This is, from my memory, the very latest one. I think this is book 50. There's so many in this. I think it's like 54? 54, 55, something like that. But... Yes, I have been slowly hauling these books. I, it's, whether it's a good idea or not, I don't know, because I haven't started this series yet, but I do love me a good crime novel, so hopefully this lives up to the hype. All right, so the next one I am going to haul is one that I read last year and quite enjoyed, and that is Everyone in My Family Has Killed Someone by Benjamin Stevenson. So this is by an Australian author. I'd never really heard of this until I think I saw it. I think it was on Instagram somewhere. So this is described as Agatha Christie meets Knives Out. Two of my favourite things of all time. So basically this follows a guy who's essentially coming to this family reunion after his brother is released from prison. But 
they essentially get stuck in this ski lodge and then suddenly their family members start dropping dead. So they have to basically solve who is out to get them and apparently this has been turned into a TV show. So hopefully, which is out sometime this year, but I definitely will be rereading this before that show comes. And the final thriller book, as far as I know, in this haul, which was probably one of my favourite thrillers of last year, was Do No Harm by Jack Jordan. So this one we follow a female surgeon who is essentially forced to murder this MP from what I gather after her son is abducted. So this doesn't just follow the nurse. Nurse, no, she's a friggin' doctor. I think we do follow a nurse in this as well. Um, but there are various viewpoints throughout this book. We don't just follow the surgeon herself. But I binge read this in the day. Favourite thriller of last year. Rated it five stars. So highly, highly recommend. But yes, I really, really just wanted to haul this as part of my crime collection. Alrighty then. So the next three books I want to talk about are also continuations of series. So the first one I want to talk about is The Ballad of Never After by Stephanie Garber. This is the second book after the... Once Upon a Broken Heart. I read Once Upon a Broken Heart last year, absolutely loved it. Had to pick up the sequel pretty much the month after. Uh, and I read this in a day. Five stars. The ending of this book, holy crap, I can... I, I need answers now. Like, Stephanie Garber could not write book three fast enough, but this is kind of... It, not. It's not really a continuation of the Caraval series, but... I know some people say that you don't have to read it, and you don't, but I found that I personally liked the fact that I have read the Caravale series prior to this, but you don't actually have to. Um, this series does stand well on its own, but I did like the extra little background that you do get from the previous trilogy. But, like I said, you don't have to have read Caravale trilogy to read this one but highly highly recommend if you're just starting with Stephanie's work even just pick this series up if you don't really want to read Caraval um, but I do highly encourage you to pick up the Caraval series but yes this was probably another one of my favorite books of last year rated at five stars absolutely absolutely adored it okay so the next one I want to talk about is the follow-on and it's part of a duology. So this one is The Dragon's Promise by Elizabeth Lynn. This is the sequel to Six Crimson Cranes. I quite enjoy Six Crimson Cranes. I think I gave it four stars upon my first read. So in that one we follow a young girl who is essentially cursed by her stepmother after finding out that she's a sorceress and is into some really dark, dark magic. So I can't remember too much about what happens in that book. I do have to go back and reread Six Crimson Cranes before this. Um, but how pretty is this cover? Like, hello. But yes, I really, really do want to pick this up hopefully this year. But we shall see. I do seriously need to reread Six Crimson Cranes before I pick this beauty up because it's been a while and I think I've basically forgotten. I did read 111 books last year, so yeah, it, they all blend together, but I'm very, very excited to read this sequel, hopefully in 2020. Alrighty, and the final follow-up book I want to talk about is Kingdom of the Fear by Kerry Manasalko. So this is the third final book in the Kingdom of the Wicked trilogy. I absolutely loved the first two books. Uh, I recently read her finished her Stalking Jack the Ripper series as part of my Shelter Destruct series. It was okay. Um, the first book I probably enjoyed most out of that, those four books. But I definitely find I enjoyed this series a lot more than I did the Stalking Jack the Ripper ones. But, yeah, so in this one we follow a young girl called Amelia whose sister is essentially murdered after being discovered that she's a witch. Um, but basically all her family is magical anyway and Amelia makes a deal with a demon to essentially find out who killed her sister and why so this is the third and final book in that series and this was another one that I was hoping to get to last year but unfortunately I didn't get to it but hopefully I do have plans to read, read, to, read, read to read this and finish off the trilogy this year so fingers crossed I get that done Okay, so the next three books I want to talk about are starts of new series. So, 
let's start with the first one I want to talk about, and that's Fair Lady Fortune by Chloe Gong. So this is the start of a brand new, I think it's a duology from what I've been told. Um, this, I do believe you have to have read the, what's it called? The Our Violet Delights duology to essentially have an idea of what this is about because I know from reviews I've seen that you do get spoiled for that series if you start reading this but I don't know too much about this I know it's basically it follows about Chinese gangs and the main character is essentially immortal so I don't know too much else besides that but I'm just obsessed with this cover um, I do also have the Fairy Loot Edition, which we will get to very, very soon. But yes, I'm super duper excited to read this. Um, I did buy the paperback originally because I totally forgot that I'd ordered the Fairy Loot Edition. But I definitely will be reading this and hopefully I enjoy it because, as you will see later, the Fairy Loot Edition of this is oh, beautiful. But Yes, I'm very, very excited to get started with this as well. Okay, so the next one I want to talk about is Quite a Chunky Beast. So this was probably my favourite debut novel of last year, and that is Ordinary Monsters by J.M. Miro. So this one is, I'd say it's X-Men meets, what do they describe it as? X-Men meets Stranger Things? Yeah, Stranger Things. Um, I've never seen Stranger Things, so... Don't quote me on that. I don't know whether you'd count Stranger Things. This a mix of Stranger Things. I don't know. But this was probably my favourite debut novel of last year. He is quite a chunky boy. But I really, really enjoyed this. This one follows essentially a group of or uh, two orphans actually. Who get picked up by this headmaster of this. Is essentially the school for... I think they're called talents in this world, from what I remember. I did read this back in, I think it was July of last year. So it has been about six months since I've read this, but I remember just absolutely flying through this book. And um, like I said, it's not a thin book, but I'm very, very excited to know that this is actually going to be a trilogy. So I'm quite excited to see what J.M. Miro does in the next book. Hopefully that comes out this year, but I, it may not. I can't really say I've heard much else about it. But yes, if you're looking for a fantasy that's, like I said, it was, it's been described as X-Men meets Stranger Things. So if you like Supernatural and Victorian books, then definitely pick this up because this was just a chef's kiss. It was beautiful. Okay, and the final book I want to talk about for this section of the little haul is Belladonna by Adeline Grace. So this is also the start of a, pretty sure it's a duology. So I know this one we follow a girl who's essentially been circulating around different foster homes and essentially her wealthy guardians have been dying essentially every time she goes to see them. But... There's, from what I can gather, it's, she essentially gets to finally, gets to a family that she really, really loves, but then, of course, strange things start happening again, and this is essentially her trying to save this family that actually does give a shit about her, so I'm very, very excited to pick this up. This is my first book by Ellen, so, but how, look how gorgeous this cover is, like, there's so many pretty books in this haul. I, I just cannot. This is absolutely stunning. Okay, so the last lot of books in this bit I want to talk about is all standalones. So, the first two I want to talk about is some Colleen Hoover books. So, for this I picked up It Ends With Us and It Starts With Us. So, this I know is all over Booktube, Instagram, and that. I did read Verity last year and it was probably <laughs> it's a really good introduction to Colleen Hoover um that book was a mind fuck uh, let me just say that mind fuck is the first word that comes into my head when I think about Verity but this I know is I know Becca from Becca in the Books described this as like a contemporary with some romantic elements I'm not too sure but I know this follows 
uh, girl who comes across this brain surgeon, I think he is, and essentially starts meeting up with him. And then her dad, at the beginning, her dad has just passed away and she has very complex feelings about that because um, he essentially was a massive piece of shit and belted her mum all the time. So I will preface a big content warning for domestic abuse in this because I do know that a lot of the past elements are described in diary entries. But I'm quite curious to see whether or not I do enjoy this or not. And It Starts With Us is apparently the sequel that nobody wanted to It Starts With Us. But I'm very, very keen to see whether or not I like it, like I said with It Starts With Us. But these editions together are just so, so pretty. Um, I did originally have the smaller version of this. But, of course, because this came out they decided to release the collector's edition with bonus, I don't know whether it has a bonus chapter or it's just more content for the sake of it, but um, we've got to have matching books because I can't have this one and then a book that was about yay big, so it annoys me. But yeah, so it'll be interesting to see whether or not I do like these books, but fingers crossed, we shall see. Okay. So, next two I want to talk about are also standalones. So, the first one is Angelica Frankenstein Makes Her Match. So, this is by Sally Thorne, who is the author of The Hating Game. Now, I haven't read The Hating Game. I don't read a lot of office romances, so I don't know whether I'd like that book. But this, from what I gather, it's about this woman who wants to create her perfect match, I suppose. Um, so yeah, I don't know too much about this. I haven't read too much into it, but I'm hoping I like this because I like gothic kind of things, romance and all that. So yeah, but hopefully I do enjoy this because I haven't read anything by Sally Thorne before, but we shall see. Fingers crossed I do like this. Okay, and the final standalone I want to talk about is Babel by R.F. Kuang. I know some people say Babel, but I, I just say Babel. It's, I know there's been a lot of debate of, over how this is pronounced, but I say Babel. It's just easier for me. So I know this follows a young boy called Robin who is essentially taken by this professor and given a placement at Oxford. Um, I don't know too much else about it apart from the fact that this has been a very, very hyped book. Um, I've never read anything by Al Kwong before, so this will be interesting to see whether I will become a fan of this, but I have seen nothing but praise for this book, so hopefully I'm in that percentage that do love it, but we shall see. Like I said, I've never read anything R.F. Kwong has written, but hopefully they will change this year. Alrighty, so let's get into some hard covers. So... The next lot of books I want to talk about are mostly biographies, autobi- what are they autobiographies? Yeah, I'd say so. Biographies, autobiographies and that. So, the first one I want to talk about is No Finish Line by Johnny Ruffo. This is basically, if anyone doesn't know who Johnny Ruffo is, he is an Australian singer who is unfortunately at the moment battling a battle with brain cancer. And from what I can gather about this, this is essentially about his coming to terms with the fact that his illness is now terminal um, and it's not a matter of if but when he will die. So I know I definitely will shed a tear or two over this. Um, I've known people who have thankfully come out of the end of their diagnosis but unfortunately so many other people do unfortunately don't have that luxury and poor Johnny is one of them so I know it's going to break my heart to read this but I I love books that can make me cry. Okay so the next one I want to talk about is a book that was my absolutely favourite read of last year and I am so so excited to pick it up again for the month of January because I will be reading it as my non-fiction prompt for the Who Done It readers on but that is 
the Alaric Mandaris. This was probably my most anticipated read of last year. And as you can see from these tabs, I have read this since I hauled it, but oh my god, this book was both a absolute delight and absolutely heartbreaking at the same time. Um, Alan was one of my all-time favourite actors, still is to this day, and like I said, as you can see from these tabs, I I normally don't annotate, but um, yeah, as you can see, it's pretty, is that kind of, stop focusing on my eyes, it's pretty annotated, so yes, I absolutely love this book, I cannot wait to dot, camera's not going to focus on me now, hello, thank you. So, yeah, I can, I'm so, so excited to get back into it for the readers on this month, but this was my absolute favourite book of 2022, and I cannot wait to see what everyone else thought of it as well. Sticking with actors, I know the next book I want to talk about is Beyond the One by Tom Felton. So, as I'm filming this haul, I have actually read this as well. As you guys know, Tom Felton is a well-known actor for several films, he is he's one of those actors that when I was younger I didn't have much of an interest in but I still wanted to read it because I like hearing about actors and their interpretation of Hollywood in general and the pressures that you face especially if you're a young kid actor like Tom was and so many others are and what I found interesting about this one was his the way he had to adapt to go back to auditioning after his role in Harry Potter ended. So yeah, I really, really enjoyed this and it is also a signed copy as well. So yeah, this was, this was quite enjoyable read but I'm so glad I hauled this and I definitely will do want to reread it. But hopefully sometime in the new year, but we shall see. But this was another favourite of last year as well. Alright, so the next one I recently hauled was Waypoints by Sam Hewen. Now, if you guys don't know who Sam Hewen is, what the hell are you doing? Um, <laughs> but Sam, for anyone who doesn't know, plays Jamie Fraser in Outlander, and he recently released this book called Waypoints. So this is essentially, he had this idea to climb the highest hill in Scotland, which was... So basically this was his decision to set out along the 96 mile West Highland Way. So that's essentially the one of the longest treks in Scotland. And this is basically him reflecting as he's going on this journey about how he became an actor, his role in Outlander, and essentially how he's been shaped by his past and his family. But this was quite an interesting read as well. I really, really enjoyed this as well. Enjoyed this. Um, can't too, say too much about it, but I don't want to spoil it for anyone. But this one is also a lovely signed one with this beautiful nameplate. So, yeah, if you're a fan of Outlander, definitely pick this up. But I'm so, so glad I hold this. But this was just an absolutely stunning edition, and I'm so glad it's signed as well. So following on from that one, we have another celebrity bi autobiography. Now, this one I'm sure a lot of you have probably already read, but I didn't... Originally I wasn't going to pick this up, but I thought, oh, I'll see what it is all about. And that is, of course, I'm Glad My Mum Died by Jeanette McCurdy. So Jeanette obviously was in iCarly. Now, I didn't ever see iCarly. I think I passed... I, was, I think I was probably way too old for iCarly when it came out, but I know Jeanette was a part of iCarly. She's one of the popular two main roles. This was quite an interesting read as well. Um, this book made me so grateful for the relationship I have with my family um, because, holy shit, some of the fucked up shit in this book, I'm like, I was sitting there going, are you fucking serious? Like, really? Um, but, yeah, I, I'm glad I'm mum died too, because holy crap. Um, yeah, 
I don't want to spoil this too much, but there's definitely some dark themes in this book, so I do, I will pre-warn you going into this to, yeah, it's, it made me so much more grateful for the relationship I have with my parents, and that, um, yeah, it, this wasn't, I'd say this is a classic example of mum trying to be kid's best friend before being a parent, but, yeah, definitely pick this up anyway, but, yeah, I will preface a uh, content warning for, um, yeah, manipulative family especially, because, um, holy shit. That's all I'll say about that was holy shit. Okay, so the last two autobiographies I'll quickly mention, because I haven't read too much into these, but that is Apocryphal Happiness by Richard E. Grant and My Dreaming Time. My Dreaming Time. My Dream Time by Ash Barty. So, this I wasn't going to pick up until I saw an interview on Sunrise here in Australia. And it sounded really, really interesting. I know he talks a lot about essentially trying to... He looks back on his life as a kid. But then it talks... From what I gather, it talks about a lot about the grief process especially after his wife passed away from cancer and Ash Barty I'm sure everybody knows who she is but if you don't she is basically a tennis player who is probably one of my favorite people in the world and I don't even follow tennis like I don't at all but Ash just happened to retire last year and she is only, I think she's only 28. I'm not too sure. I'll correct myself down here if that's not the case. But yes, I'm very, very keen to read about Asher's life. And you know, she is such an inspiration. And uh, anyone who, even for people who don't follow tennis like I do, I, I'd probably definitely recommend this book. But hopefully I can get around to this this year. But there's just so many books I need to read in 2023 but hopefully i can get around to this this year okay now we're getting to the tail end of this book haul uh i cannot believe how many books i've hauled for this but um let's finally get to the special editions that i've hauled so the first one is one that i got probably i think it was in august of last year but i've been meaning to sort of save up some of the books to haul so for the first special edition we're going to look at is the complete Sherlock Holmes series. Um, how freaking stunning is that gold? I mean, come on. And the end papers in this are just, oh my god. So I saw this in my local bookshop and I'm like, Sherlock Holmes? Complete series? I mean, hello. The one thing I don't like about this, though, I will say, is, um, small print. Like, why is the print so small? And I have good eyesight, but holy shit, like, dude, small, small print. Small print. Why? Why is this so small? But I, I'm very, very excited to hopefully one day read this. I do want to do a vlog where I probably will read the whole of this series but hopefully one point but yeah um this book is just absolutely stunning and i'm i'm just so i'm losing my voice <laughs> i don't think i've talked as much in ages but um yes i saw this in the bookshop and i knew i had to get it because as a fan of sherlock holmes and murder mysteries this is just an absolute stunner and i just had to have it in my collection Okay, so the next two special editions I want to talk about are the Fable Crate editions. So, in towards the end of last year, I got... Well, no, it wasn't the end of last year. It was maybe mid last year. I got the Fable Crate edition of, I think it... What was it? What was the book called? Honey Trap, that's what it was. So I got the first book of Honey Trap by Tate James, and I quite enjoyed that book. So Honey Trap was a mafia romance sort of thing. And then after the first book came out as a special edition, Fable Crate announced that they were doing the second two books in the trilogy. So for the, this one, we now have 
that job and kill all that. So this is book two and this is book three. And um, can we just appreciate how absolutely beautiful the foiling on this book is. Um, and this also has gorgeous spray edges as well. And oh, can we talk about this? The end papers in these books are absolutely beautiful. I cannot get over how gorgeous these are. And of course these books are also signed by Tate James. So this one is Dead Drop. And then this one, Kill Order, is again we have the beautiful foiling in on the colour. The only thing I don't like about these is they don't have like a cover, a dust jacket to protect them. I hate, it sort of annoys me that it's just a felt hardcover part of the book but that's probably the most it's probably the only thing I have to complain about in terms of these books but again we have beautiful and sprayed all printed edges with not a focus there we go look at that these are just gorgeous and as always we have the end papers for this and this book is also signed by Tate James so these books are just absolutely beautiful and I'll show you the first one as well so this is the whoops I've got that the wrong way okay so this is the trilogy put together so we have books one two and three and these are just absolutely stunning so as you can see Honey Trap has the same uh, I'm just gonna focus on my eyes. There we go. That's absolutely beautiful. These books are just absolutely stunning. I am so so glad I decided to purchase the second two. But yeah, the only complaint I have about this is the fact that they don't have a dust jacket to protect them, because the I don't know the fact that this kind of this doesn't have protection kind of annoys me a little bit. But other than that, these are just absolutely beautiful books. And I'm so glad I'm going to have these displayed on my shelves. Okay, so the next two special editions I want to talk about are books that I have actually already read. But as soon as these editions were announced, I knew I had to get them. So the first one I'll talk about is Verity by Colleen Hoover. As I said earlier in the book haul, I did read this last year and absolutely adored it. And when they announced that they were doing the hardcover special edition, I just, I had to have it. So this one that we follow a young girl, well she's not exactly young, I think she's like 18, who, when we first meet her in the book, she witnesses this guy get killed and she is essentially this struggling writer who gets hired by the husband of the this author called Verity who writes these is it romance novels? I can't I'm pretty sure it's romance novels that she writes but yeah so our main character essentially gets hired to ghostwrite the final two books and she is essentially invited to the home of the author but when she gets there things go not quite what they seem but the word I'd use to describe this book is mindfuck. That is what I would use to describe Verity. But this is an absolutely stunning book. I don't know whether it has too much else in it. But this does have an extra chapter. And I've seen some people say that... Um, I'm trying not to lose my voice because I've been talking for so long. Um, I've heard from some people who have read the bonus chapter that it's like... Holy shit, holy shit, like this head just adds an extra layer to it. So I'm quite intrigued to see whether or not the extra chapter adds anything to it. But w whether or not it does is remains to be seen. But this is just an absolutely gorgeous hardcover. And I cannot wait to have this on my shelves either way. Um, even if I don't like the bonus chapter, I definitely do want to reread this. Because um, this book was, this book was the right. I'll, I'll say that much. Okay, and the final standard special edition I want to talk about is one of my absolute favourite series. And that, of course, is The Prison Healer by Lynette Noni. 
So this was a special edition that was announced in November of last year and I had to laugh. I There was so many people complaining because this was originally just an Australian only edition. So anyone who lives in Australia will know that getting special editions here in Australia is quite hard, especially since a lot of them are based overseas, in, especially in the UK and the States. And it was so good that we Aussies got to have this special edition. But I will leave a link to a website down below that Lynette not only has shot herself, sorry, <clears throat> I'm trying not to lose my voice. Uh, Lynette Noni shared a group where you can actually get them to or you can actually order this book from them and they can actually send it to you guys overseas so anyone who watches my videos who is not in Australia and does want to get their hands on this can absolutely do so but let me show you this is just absolutely gorgeous so in this we have of course character portraits not just there but this as well and the whoops oh I'm trying not to get this damaged because it's so pretty even just the red cover on this is just absolutely beautiful um, and the metallic finish on this I don't know whether it shows up too well I don't know whether yeah there you go it's got that nice metallic shine as well but as you guys know, I absolutely love this series. I love anything Lynette Noni puts out. But, yeah, so if you guys do want a copy of this and you're not in Australia, I will leave a link to the website Lynette Noni posted down below. So if you do go, if you guys do want this posted overseas, you can absolutely get your hands on this. But it was just so interesting to see the initial reaction when this was announced because, like I said, it was only announced for Australians and normally we <laughs> we don't get as much special editions as everybody else so we're quite lucky that we got first shot in to get this beautiful book because it is just an absolute stunner okay and let's get on to the final three books I want to talk about so these three are the fairy loot books that I have hauled so sticking with the Prison Healer trilogy I got the third and final book in the series and that is the blood trailer so this is of course the fairy loot edition so as you can see it is actually blue so the original cover which i'll pop up here is as you can see is different but this is just absolutely beautiful i cannot get over how gorgeous this edition is it's gonna focus there we go and the stenciled edges on this are just absolutely gorgeous I cannot believe how beautiful this is. And then, of course, we have the dust inside art, which is gorgeous. And, oh, the dust jacket art. Now, this is probably... The dust jacket art, my favourite is probably the first one that Fairy Lou did. But these... The art in this is just as equally beautiful. But the art inside the first dust jacket... Uh, the art inside the first dust jacket was definitely my favourite out of the three, but this is just another absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous book, and I'm so, so excited I've got the whole set now, because this is just, oh my god, this is stunning. So sticking with Fairy Loot again, we have another special edition, so I got the Fairy Loot edition of Forging... Silver and Stars by Bridget Cameron. So this is a this is the beginning of a new series from what I gather. So this follows on from the events of the Accurso Dark and Lonely trilogy. So I do know you do have to have read that trilogy to understand what happens in this one. But this is of course the standard fairy loot edition and I will pop the original cover here because it is different. So as you can see, this one is mostly white, where the original cover, I've, from memory, is mostly dark. And this is, of course, we have the lovely spread edges. This is just gorgeous. Uh, did this have dust jacket art? Or kind of. Okay, so this 
and we got the end papers here as well and this okay so it doesn't have dust jacket art it's more like a reverse dust jacket uh, I'm not usually a fan of reverse dust jackets I prefer that but it does depend on the art mostly if as to whether or not I do flip the covers but as you guys saw it's just mostly text art in this one but this is an absolutely gorgeous cover I cannot believe how well Fairy Loot have done with this book it's just an absolute star okay, and the final book we are finally at the end of this haul I cannot believe I've <laughs> I've hauled this many but sticking with Fairy Loot for the last time I this is probably the very recent book I have received from Fairy Loot and that was Fair Lady Fortune by Chloe Gong. So, as you guys saw before, I do have the paperback version, but this one, oh, this is just absolutely beautiful. So, as you can see, it's a blue cover where the original cover is pink, and this, of course, has stenciled edges. This is probably my favourite fairy loot of the lot so far. So, there we go. This is just absolutely stunning we have the back and the absolute now this one doesn't have dust jacket art but can we just appreciate this the dust jacket uh, not dust jacket the freaking end papers holy shit this is just stunning so that's the front and of course we have on the other side we still have the end papers art of this oh my god whoever did these drawings is a genius oh and oh i've got to show you guys this this is just oh the foiling on this is just absolutely beautiful uh, this is probably me, my favorite fairy loot special edition i've got so far so yeah it's oh this is just absolutely stunning i cannot believe i'm so glad i originally was hesitant about getting this fairy loot edition because i wasn't sure whether i was going to enjoy this book but hopefully i do but oh this even if i don't i'm still keeping this edition because this is just absolutely beautiful oh i need a drink i'm exhausted okay guys so that was the end of my massive book haul uh thank you so so much for sticking with me throughout this um i cannot believe i hauled this many books in the space of a few months but that is where i'm going to leave you all for now if you like this video and you have made it to the end please leave the book stack emoji i would love to see what you guys think what books out of the stack you've read what you recommend i start with whether any of these books were your favorite reads of last year what i should prioritize but thank you so so much for sticking with me through this even though my voice is starting to go i did not expect this video to be as long as it has but I'll, this is where I will leave you for now. If you like this video, please do give it the big thumbs up. If you have not subscribed to me, I would love it if you did. And I shall see you guys again in another video. Bye.